Hey students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast. Today's aim is the Civil War home front, and here are your objectives. Please pause the video, look these questions over, and get ready to copy some vocab and take some notes. Make sure that you have your vocab sheet in front of you before you continue. You don't have to write this term down, but the home front refers to events during a war that are related to civilians or non-soldiers. In other words, it's what's happening to the men, women, and children who aren't off fighting. In the last lesson, you saw the experience of slaves on the home front, how they were both impacted and not impacted by the Emancipation Proclamation. Today, you'll look at the home front experiences of some other groups. Let's look first at how, as is common during times of war, the government restricted people's civil liberties. Habeas corpus is a Latin phrase for a certain legal right, the right of the accused to be brought before a court and told their crime before they are put in prison. This right is found in Article I of the U.S. Constitution. During the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln had a bad record of taking away American civil liberties. Civil liberties are the basic rights guaranteed by the Constitution. And one of the liberties that he took away was habeas corpus. Without habeas corpus, citizens could be held in prison before trial. Lincoln used this power to detain people who spoke out in favor of the Confederacy. And he justified his decision by arguing that those people were dangerous and threatened the war effort. Lincoln also took away Americans' First Amendment rights to free speech and freedom of the press by closing down newspapers in the North that were critical of him. So, Lincoln went after dissenters, people that spoke against the government, by taking away the right of habeas corpus and by limiting what newspapers were allowed to publish. Another thing that happened to civilians during the Civil War was that some of them were forced to fight even if they didn't want to. In 1863, Congress passed the Conscription Act, also known as the Draft. This was a law that required military service for all adult men. The draft means that certain people are selected to go to war, and if they're selected, they have no choice but to go. During the Civil War, the draft applied to men between the ages of 20 and 45. I just said that people that are drafted have no choice, but that wasn't exactly true. And that's because wealthy men who were drafted could pay what was called a commutation fee of $300 to hire a substitute, which meant that someone else, usually a poor person, would serve in the military in their place. The commutation fees angered poor northerners who complained that the Civil War was, quote, a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. In 1864, tensions surrounding the Conscription Act erupted in New York City during what is known as the New York City Draft Riots. The draft riots were five days of violence in New York City related to anger over the draft. The draft riots were one of the worst riots in American history, with hundreds of people killed and hundreds of buildings set on fire. You'll learn more about the causes and effects of the draft riots in class. All right, now it's time to review the objectives. And if you don't know the answer to any of them, rewind the video and look again. I will see you in class. Bye, students.